All right. Again, uh, welcome everyone uh, to this presentation hosted by FFR Trading. My name is John Madison. I'm the senior strategist here at FFR Trading, and I'll be your host for this special presentation with Ian Cooper. Uh, you should see here a risk disclosure. This is a standard risk disclosure. Uh, will you agree, guys, that trading and investing is risky business, right? Especially if you don't know what you're doing. We suggest you put your trading in the hands of a professional or a proven winner like Ian Cooper, right? Much better idea, I think, than, than trying to do this on your own. Uh, we are also in a highly regulated industry. So everything I say and later when uh, Ian speaks has to be accurate, okay? Okay, uh, before I bring Ian on, I wanna cover a few key pieces of uh, information with you. Uh, first, we'll take a look at you know who we are at FFR Trading and what our role here is. Uh, second, I'll give you some background information on Ian Cooper. We'll look at some of the academics of his news event trader program, along with the performance of the program since its inception. And uh, finally, we'll review the educational material and everything that comes with the news event trader program service. All right, so who are we at FFR Trading and what is our role here? Well, we are a due diligence firm, all right? Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that we've been evaluating traders and their strategies for over 15 years to find real traders who make real money, right? So we sift through the thousands of strategies out there to bring you the best of the best, right? Well, how do we do that? Well, each trader and strategy has to go through an eight-step certification process before that trader is allowed to provide their strategy to our clients here at FFR Trading. So some of those steps include a thorough interview process where we get the rules for the strategy. The traders have to have at least 15 years of actual trading experience. We get a back test of the strategy and we get the traders actual brokerage statements, right? If they can get through all those steps, which 95% of the traders out there cannot, Right, but if they can get through all that, the final step is we run that strategy on a live account, make sure that uh, the trades are being executed properly, it performs as anticipated before we ever release that strategy to our FFR clients. It's a pretty thorough process. I think you guys would agree, yes? Yep. All right. All right, let's talk about Ian Cooper. Uh, Ian has been trading stocks, options, and ETFs for over 20 years. Uh, he's been helping traders learn to trade options, learn technical analysis, and to trade news by exploiting uh, what's called the herd mentality of retail traders. He spotted the financial crisis of 2008 early, along with the death of Lehman and uh, Bear Stearns, as well as the collapse of the Dow to 6,500 uh, and its subsequent recovery. Uh, Ian utilizes both technical and fundamental analysis to help investors grow their, their wealth. So let's get into some of the academics of Ian's News Event Trader Options Program. Um, I won't spend too much time on this as Ian is going to be in, uh, going into much gr greater detail on how he trades news events. But some of the basics are you know, he's looking for excessively overbought or oversold news opportunities. He's either going to be buying a call or a put. He aims for three new opportunities each week, recommends a minimum account size of $5,000, and always uses a stop loss. At least 35% is used to protect the uh, portfolio. Okay. All right. Let's get into the performance. All right. So here is the performance summary. And this uh, start date was January of 2018 through December of 2021. So four years of uh, trading here. These trades are based on a $10,000 account size uh, with uh, an allocation of $1,000 per trade position, right? So in that four years, that $10,000 turns into $131,164, right? That's a return on capital of over 1,300%. Right now, think about this. On average, right, average over the four-year period, he's averaging 338 percent per year. Right. Think about what would that do for your trading. Maybe you're saving for retirement. 
what would that do for your retirement, for that IRA that's sitting earning 8% a year, right? Or maybe even not even doing that well, right? All right, monthly average. So if we look at the monthly average on a $10,000 account, he's averaging 2,800 per month on a $10,000 account, right? So those of you that maybe you're looking for income, right? Would that help supplement your income? All right, think about those things. So the win percentage, he's hitting almost 80% winners over the four-year period, right? The average winner of $664, the average loss, $616. All right, so pretty impressive numbers. I think you would, uh, you would agree. All right, this is a more recent sample. So this is the last couple of years, All right? What I want you to see is the equity curve here. All right, again, this is $10,000 account allocating $1,000 per trade, non-compounded, right? But notice the equity curve. So you get a big move up in the equity here, right? Little flat period here, goes on to a new equity high, a little bit of a drawdown here, new equity high, right? Little drawdown, new equity highs. You got this little trough here, drawdown, and then an explosive move out of there, right? Then a drawdown, new equity highs, All right? So you get the picture, right? A good strategy and a good trader, they all have drawdowns, right? They all, all go through periods where they give back profit. But what happens is they come out of that drawdown and go on and make a new equity high so that you keep making higher highs to the right-hand side of the, uh, the equity curve here, right? That's what you want to see. And that's what a good trader and strategy uh, will do for you. So again, guys, think about what these kind of numbers would do for you. Some ex uh, you know, amazing results, I think uh, you would agree here. All right, everyone, uh, let's not wait any longer. It is my pleasure to introduce Mr. Ian Cooper. Uh, Ian, I'll switch, uh, get ready to switch over to you. And uh, once Ian is done, I'll come back. I'll go over everything that comes with Ian's news trader uh, event, uh, news event trader service. Uh, you know, to help you make an informed decision if this is something that uh, uh, might change your financial life. I think it will. All right, so I'm going to switch over to you, Ian. Go ahead and make you presenter. You should get a pop up on that side, and then you can uh, project your screen. All right, perfect. All right. I, I do Thanks. see your PowerPoint. Thanks so much. I appreciate that. All right, just want to make sure everyone can uh, hear me okay and see the screen okay. If there are any issues, please let us know, and we will make uh, any adjustments uh, necessary on our side. It's nice to meet everyone. I see we have a good uh, amount of people in the room uh, today. Um, hope everyone's doing well, especially with the, uh, you know, the pandemic still uh, making life a bit, uh, you know, interesting to say the least. Um, I, oops. Again, my name is Ian Cooper. Uh, for the last 22 years, uh, I've been uh, involved in, uh, you know, fundamental technical analysis, uh, but I wanted to make things a bit more exciting. So I started to include uh, news analysis as well. And I combine that with billionaire strategy, which we'll get into, uh, as well as technical analysis, uh, which has been able to call tops and bottoms in indices, um, as well as in uh, a good chunk of stocks in every sector out there. And we can also exploit herd mentality, which makes things a, a bit more interesting in the market, because as we all know, herd mentality uh, can really, you know, send a stock screaming higher or lower and what's happening is a lot of people will will follow a group because they think that that group knows uh, what's happening and and they're and they they think that group knows exactly where the stock's headed uh and a lot of times herd mentality uh can really cost a lot of people a lot of money because they move in the wrong uh, direction and we'll show you how we can take full advantage of that along the way uh today we wanted to quickly talk about uh, news trading and why we're able to trade the news today. Uh, we'll talk about the anticipation of news briefly, as well as dissemination of news briefly. But what we really want to get into uh, is where a lot of the opportunity can be found 
and that's with the death of news. You know, when your news cycle, eventually the news flow is going to die out. You know, you have initially you have a ripple effect of news. Uh, you know, throw a pond, uh, throw a pond, throw a stone in a pond, and it ripples out. But eventually that ripple dies, and the same thing happens with the news. And along with the news, we can discuss billionaire strategy, herd mentality, and the technical pivot points that we use with most trades, uh, which can call tops and bottoms, you know, up to 80% of the time. You know, lately, markets have been a bit screwy because of the Federal Reserve and because of volatility having to do with Russia and the Ukraine. So it's made markets a bit uh, nuttier than usual. Um, but we, we've managed to still do well in the market despite that. Um, we'll start with the introduction to news trading. What allows us to trade the news is information friction. Now, for many, many years, a lot of us have been told that we could not trade the news. Uh, analysts told us that uh, as soon as news is released, it's immediately priced into the stock, uh, which is efficient market theory. However, that's no longer the case. Uh, because it does not account for the friction of news flow. You know, years ago, you had limited uh, news sources. Today, you have tens of thousands of news sources uh, online, on TV, on the radio, you name it. And we're all getting our information at different times of the day. For example, if you have an intended reach of, let's say, 100 people, and only 30 of them get the news in the morning, well, those people are reacting in the morning. The other 70 people who receive the news during the day or that night have not had the opportunity to react. So that's why we can trade news because news goes from you know local to national, sometimes to international to all over the world. Um, and, and that's where we're finding a good chunk of opportunity. And that's why we're able to trade the news. Um, if we break down a little bit, anticipation of news, uh, I like to refer to this one as a snowball effect. Uh, for example, if you start at the top of a, uh, a hill with a small snowball, and as you begin to roll that snowball down the hill, uh, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger along the way. The same thing happens with stocks, especially when it's rolling down the hill, collecting momentum from the news. Now, if we can spot a potential opportunity ahead of the herd, we can take a position and wait. Um, then as others begin to wake up to the opportunity and more and more people wake up to the opportunity, our snowball gets bigger and bigger and picks up even more momentum. You know, typically we can do that with uh, biotech stocks, for example, uh, those facing an FDA decision, a phase two or phase three trial data release, uh, a PDUFA date, uh, an advisory panel uh, committee date, you name it. Uh, the goal is to get in before the herd begins to pick up on the news. Uh, and we can, uh, at, a, at another time, we can discuss exactly how we're doing that with biotech and pharmaceutical stocks. Uh, today, I don't want to, you know, sway too far from uh, what we're discussing here at the moment. Um, or you can look at a, a stock like uh, Digital World Acquisition Corporation, which is a Donald Trump-backed stock that's been running on anticipatory momentum. Now, Towards the end of November, early December, we started getting news that Donald Trump's, uh, he's going to be launching an app called Truth, uh, releasing news as well. And this is the one of the, this is the company behind it. And as you can see, after that news was released, it started to snowball and it started to collect momentum along the way. As the news began to come out, momentum began to build and build and build. And we had a giant snowball uh, from lows of, let's say, 40 to, you know, just over 90 a share. But the, one of the only reasons that the stock pulled back recently is because of the uh, the the, uh, the volatility in the markets lately with the Federal Reserve and Russia, you know, you name it. Um, but this has been a hot stock simply on anticipation of the uh, of Donald Trump's app, which I believe is coming out uh, towards the end of uh February. So we could potentially see higher highs in the stock as we near uh, that date. The only thing you have to be careful of with a stock like this is on the date, uh, on the actual catalyst date, which would be late February, whenever the app is coming out, typically you'll see a sell the news reaction. So you want to get out before that catalyst date. 
even hits because the last thing you want to do is is give up your returns in the market uh we can see with pfizer as well you know every time um you know before during and after each one of the uh coronavirus events in the news uh you could trade the anticipatory momentum effect in pfizer uh you could even play the dissemination of news with pfizer every time you know a new variant came out with the coronavirus you know we're still dealing with that and we could still see higher highs in the stock because we're still dealing uh with the with the coronavirus today unfortunately uh we can talk about dissemination of news again millions of us receive news at different times of the day and with thousands of news sources we're all exposed to news at different times so you want to think of dissemination of news sort of like tossing a stone in a pond you get that ripple effect and it goes out and out and out and out and out until eventually it dies the same thing happens with news strong news you know if, if you can look at pr newswire or market wire or find a hot story on barons or the wall street journal if it has staying power like the uh, coronavirus or news of uh, Russia and Ukraine, which has impacted oil prices, uh, you can trade that. If it's a quick press release from, let's say, PR Newswire on a company and they're talking about, um, you know, earnings, you know, that may be more of a short lived event that we may not trade on the dissemination of news. Uh, with dissemination of news, we have our news impact. And then it's dissemination waves. And then news goes from local to regional to national global in some cases. And until the ripple effect dies off, uh, the impact on stocks can be long lasting. And it is not immediately priced in as some folks would have you believe. And until the news fades and dies, we can trade the dissemination of news. For example, GameStop. When GameStop, GameStop you know, they were in massive trouble at one point. We thought they were going to go out of business at one point. All of a sudden, GameStop became a red hot Reddit stock. And the Reddit group started to push this stock up aggressively, you know, between, I believe, August and uh, December. Now, you can see the news was not immediately priced in. And you can also see that as more and more people woke up to the opportunity, the higher the stock price in GameStop rose or we can look at take two interactive now take two interactive um was reacting uh to news that uh, microsoft was going to spend it wants to spend around 70 billion dollars for activision blizzard now activision blizzard as you know exploded on that news but so did competitors like take two interactive uh ea sports uh, you name it, the gaming sector exploded higher. And as you can see around uh, the 18th, as the news of Activision and Microsoft began to come out, it began to impact uh, Take-Two as well. And the dissemination of news on that excitement and, and new speculation that it could potentially uh, impact other gaming stocks sent Take-Two even higher as well from about 150 uh to around uh, 169 a share at one point all on that dissemination of news uh and then there's the uh eventual death of news now as we've said uh, you know eventually news dies off now years ago i'm sure you remember the ebola story was red hot uh, but you know you don't hear about it anymore because the news faded and it died off as did stocks that ran higher with it. You know, Arbutus Biopharma had exploded uh, between uh, 2017 and mid 2018, all on that Ebola story, because uh, apparently they had a vaccine that could be used. But look what happened after the Ebola story finally faded off and died. So did the stock. And that's the death of news impact. You know, people got you know, a lot of investors and traders got far too greedy and pushed this stock aggressively higher. But how can we spot where fear and greed are getting a bit out of hand? Well, that's where we can talk about herd mentality, technical pivot points, and billionaire strategy. Now, we want to stop just for a second before we get in, into that. 
uh, just to see if anyone had any questions or comments or anything that we may be able to address. Uh, please just type it into the uh, chat and um, I'm more than happy to take the time to discuss even after the webinar if you ever have any questions or comments or just need further clarification on anything i'm more than happy to, to speak with you and uh and offer any potential guidance that i that i can um all right well i'm not seeing anything pop up just yet uh please know that um if you do change your mind and want to ask or comment or or whatever just uh go ahead and type it in there and we'll go ahead and um, and take care of you. Now, this is an interesting story. Now, when you think of the herd, the herd, you know, they're like sheep. You know, one sheep will follow another. In, in, in this case, 450 sheep jumped to their deaths in Turkey back in uh, 05. You know, all of a sudden, a flock of sheep started to walk up a hill, and they all started to jump off the cliff well the other sheep thought this was a good idea apparently and they began to follow those sheep and they jumped off the cliff the same thing happens in the market every day now fortunately for some some of the sheep when they dove off, off the cliff they landed on other sheep so they were okay but in the markets when you follow the herd sometimes you don't wind up so, uh, so good you, you wind up with a severe loss you get stopped out so it, it's always important that you avoid herd mentality at, at all costs in the market. You know, you know, you really have to just think for yourself. Don't buy because a lot of people are buying. Don't sell because a lot of people are buying because it can screw you up real good. I, I've seen it happen in markets many, many times, and it and uh, quite often it does not work well. In fact, nearly eighty percent of the time, I, I once heard. Uh, herd mentality can you know lose you a good deal of money. Uh, then we have the excessive fear and greed, the billionaire tricks. These three guys, uh, billionaires, millionaires, um, exploited uh, fear and greed. They made a good chunk of their money not only from fundamental analysis but also from uh, exploiting you know herd mentality, fear and greed. Warren Buffett will tell you to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. He's also said a climate of, of fear is your friend when investing. A euphoric world is your enemy. Baron Rothschild uh, once told us to uh, buy when there's blood in the streets, even if the blood is your own. Sir John Templeton waited for the point of maximum pessimism to buy in, and he would buy extreme excessive fear in the markets. And and did very, very well, as many of you are probably know. Now, so we've covered billionaire strategy, we've covered uh, the impact of the herd, uh, but now we can get into technical analysis, which tells us exactly when we want to buy into a trade or exit a trade because of fear, because of excessive fear and excessive greed. Now we can use a moving average convergence divergence or MACD, uh, Williams percentage range, relative strength, money flow uh bollinger bands now today we're going to fo focus more on macd williams rsi and your bollinger bands now you'll notice with bollinger bands is 220 there that uh tells us it's uh, the bands are set at two standard deviations above and below the 20-day moving average uh, on the stocks now this is a um a chart of the uh, Dow Jones Industrials. This was taken uh, yesterday uh, after the market fell about 430 points. It was a it was a fun day to say the least. Um, now, typically, when markets are not losing their minds, uh, you can use RSI, MACD, Williams, and Bollinger Bands to spot exactly where herd mentality is getting out of hand and where fear and greed may be getting out of hand as well. Now, in this chart. We'll start with RSI. When RSI, and if uh, I'm going to use my cursor here, if you can't see my cursor, please let me know, and I'll, I'll find a different way to uh, to highlight these. Now you can see that whenever RSI moves to or below this lower bolded line right here, uh, the, st the stock, the index, the ETF is considered uh, oversold. 
Now, uh, MACD, MAC, with MACD, sometimes we will replace it with MFI, with money flow or MFI. We're looking for extreme moves here as well, um, above and below uh, the median here. Uh, and then there's my favorite, which is Williams percentage range. Uh, the lower line, which is the 80 line, uh, that bold line right here at the bottom. When we see a move at two or below the 80 line, we have another oversold condition. Now, when these multi, oh, I'm sorry, we shall talk about the Bollinger Bands. Typically, when the lower band is hit or penetrated uh, to the downside, it's also considered oversold. So then, if you combine RSI, Bollinger Bands, MACD, Williams percentage range, say over here in June, you know, you hit the, the lower line, uh, the lower Bollinger Band was broken, you had a slight move below the median on MACD, and you had a drop below the A line on Williams percentage range. Once those aligned, you kind of knew that you know the market was bottoming out. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, anyone can call tops and bottoms after the fact. That's not what we're doing. The second that we see uh, these four confirming uh technical indicators telling us that it's oversold we're also waiting for confirmation of trend change so we're not just buying in because the indicators are saying well hey everything's extremely oversold jump in you have to wait for confirmation of trend change before you do so so that's that means maybe one or two uh three days of uh of a change in direction before you're buying in uh so that's also key it also we also see it happen again uh in september RSI uh, broke the uh, lower Bollinger Band, an extreme move on MACD, another extreme move on uh, on Williams percentage range, and then it happened again at the very start of December, and on and on and on. Uh, we can also flip things the other way as well. When the upper line on RSI, when the 70 line is hit or penetrated, uh, when MACD moves up too high too fast, when Williams percentage range moves above the 20 line and, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, it's, and uh, the, the index or stock hits the, uh, hits or penetrates the upper Bollinger Band, uh, we can, and they all agree with one another, we can tell up to 80% of the time when we're gonna pivot lower. And you can see multiple times here, uh, I mean, this one didn't work out so well where it, it jumped above the 70 line here and just remained flat for a bit and then exploded higher. So, you know, it's not, a, these aren't perfect indicators. For other times right here, you know, above the 70 line at the upper Bollinger Band, extreme move, an extreme move above the 20 line in Williams. And then we could, you know, anticipate a potential uh, reversal lower. Now you can also see the same thing here on a lower, longer term chart. Uh, the Dow Jones as well. Uh, you can see that uh, these four indicators have done a really good job of calling uh, tops and bottoms. Again, these are not perfect indicators. You're never going to find 100% success in the market or with any analysts out there. Anyone that tells you they have found 100%, the holy grail, any of that other garbage, it's not true. There's no such thing as perfection. And uh, you know I'm gonna be as upfront and, and as honest with you as I possibly can be with that. But you can see how how you know nicely uh, the, these these pivot points RSI, Bollinger Bands, MACD, Williams, Money Flow work, especially when they agree with one another. You know a lot of the moves that you'll see in the indices or the stocks or the ETFs, a lot of those extreme moves are being forced by herd mentality. If we can spot those points, we can spot excessive fear and greed as well. I mean, you can see the same thing here with Apple, with tops and bottoms, you know, 80% of the time. Uh, in fact, we, we'd we like to see a, a, a near-term push higher. Uh, you know, we're looking at this Apple again uh, these days because Apple has become excessively and insanely oversold at this point. Now you can see that at the tail end of the chart, RSI is at its 30 line. Uh, Apple is outside of the lower Bollinger Band. MACD is on the floor. Um, in fact, you, if you look at MACD historically, every time it's pushed to this point or below, uh, Apple has uh, 
has uh, pushed aggressively higher. And Williams' percentage range is, is aggressively uh, oversold as well. Um, these indicators also did a good job, you know, most of the time of calling uh, uh, tops as well. Um, here's a longer term chart of Apple with the same indicators. You can see it does a really good job of calling tops and bottoms. So sometimes we can use the same stock over and over and over and over again, as long as it's producing good returns for us. You know, Apple, for example, has done explosively well for us uh, over the last year, for example, uh, despite the, uh, the insanity and the volatility in the markets. We can look at Lithium Americas also. This is a uh, this is a, a good stock to pay close attention to, especially uh, with the lithium boom at the moment. Uh, there is a, a very, very strong demand for lithium, but we do not have enough supply, unfortunately. And with the electric vehicle boom, you know, booming as fast as it is, we don't have enough supply. So lithium prices could move aggressively higher. So knowing that, we can trade the dissemination of news. That's why this particular stock has moved aggressively higher as well. Um, and you can also see with the technical pivot points, they've done a good job of calling tops and bottoms there as well. Lithium Americas is another stock that we've played on and off uh, for the last year as well, especially uh, uh, you know, with the lithium boom showing absolutely no signs of, of fading. The only reason the stock is down recently is because the market lost its mind again. Uh, you know, thanks to the Federal Reserve and the issue over with Russia and Ukraine. Um, Tesla is another one uh, with technical indicators, you know, called tops and bottoms uh, very nicely. This is another one you can easily trade even weekly options with because uh, especially when it becomes extremely uh, oversold or overbought. Here's a longer term chart of Tesla. You can see the indicators did a good job here. And um, uh, and that's all I had for you uh, uh, today. Uh, we are looking about even new trades and new reports and, uh, and new information in our program in the next few days. We're watching the markets and trying to find where the, where the bottom is finally going to be. But we are watching most of the stocks that we did present with you uh, tonight. Uh, including uh, Microsoft, which uh, which exploded hot today on uh, on great earnings. Uh, so we wanted to stop here. Uh, see if you have any questions or or comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I'm also going to uh, turn things uh, back over uh, to John if he's still on the call. Ian, yes. All right, fantastic job. So guys, if you have uh, questions for Ian while we switch over, go ahead and post them and uh, he'll take care of those. We'll take some more questions at the end as well. Uh, but let me go ahead and switch back over here. And let's see. All right, guys, and just let me know uh, if you can see now my, uh, uh, my slide I have up here it says reality check. You guys see that? Okay. All righty. All right, guys. So, again, uh, thanks to Ian. That's a lot of great information. Uh, you know, being able to, you know, I think he revealed a lot as far as his technical indicators go, but coupling that with those news events, right? Uh, this dissemination of news, the death of news. Um, fantastic strategy, as you could, you know, as you saw by the numbers. Um, so look, guys, you know, everybody is here for a reason, right? Maybe you are uh, a, you know, new trader, you're struggling, you're not profitable, you know, you need help. Ask yourself, would this help, right? Would partnering with Ian, you know, uh, help you reach your goals? All right, so think about that. Uh, maybe you're trying to build uh, a retirement, you know, uh, but you realize, you know, 10% of a mutual fund is not going to cut it. You know, think about that. Would this, you know, getting a return in excess of over 100%, would that help? Would that help you to reach your goals? Uh, maybe you've got years of experience, uh, 
but you've never achieved you know the kind of numbers that we're talking about here today would partnering with a professional like ian help you know would it help to you know see how he has successfully been trading news events for many years now you know would it help to see what indicators he uses to help pinpoint his exact entries and his exits uh would that help you reach your goals for those uh, of you that maybe you just don't have the time to do this yourself you know maybe you work full time or you're busy running your own business you know would it help to have uh, ian's trade signal sent directly to the broker who would execute the trades on your behalf in your own account you know would that help so as you think about those questions, I'm gonna go over everything that comes with uh, Ian Cooper's news event trading service. Um, it's what we call an, a learn and earn program, right? So not only do you get the signals sent directly to your uh, uh, email or your text, but you also get all the educational material that comes with the program. So this is what you receive with uh, Ian's service. You get direct access to Ian, right? He's already offered uh, anybody here on the webinar. If, if you have questions after the webinar, you can contact him. Uh, but you get direct access to Ian for any uh, uh, educated questions regarding the markets, regarding the methodology, uh, a trade alert. Uh, you get the trade alert sent directly to your email and your cell phone. Um, you get, again, all the educational material describing the entry rules, the exit rules, the money management rules. And again, if you got uh, a situation where you cannot be in front of the computer to execute these trades, we offer access to third-party registered brokers, right? That's an option, again, for those that don't have the time to execute these trades themselves. They can have uh, one of these third-party brokers execute the trades on your behalf in your own account, right? So it could be completely hands-free. And then you get access to us here at FFR Trading. Right. Our role basically is not only to vet these traders, but also to help you build a well-diversified portfolio of strategies. Okay, so Ian is just one of the traders that we uh, work with. We've got a number of traders trading all the different uh, markets. So whether you want a, a strategy for the commodities market, or if you want a strategy for Forex, or options on stocks and ETFs, or we have different traders trading all the different markets, right? All right, so that's everything that comes with the service. Let's take a look at your offer, right? What Ian is offering you today. You have a unique opportunity here to partner with and learn from Ian Cooper. He leases his service on a one-year block, okay? And it comes with, for those on the webinar today, right? If you call today, we give you the 100% guarantee. So if the system does not make a 100% return in the first 12 months, the second year is free, All right? How is that? You know, does that help? Uh, you know, you've seen the numbers, right? He's doing well over 200% per year, okay? So if we can, if we can put a 100% guarantee on that, it takes a lot of the risk out for you, right? If you start with a $10,000 account, if you're not up 10,000 in profit in 12 months, you get another year free. I don't know who else does that. Uh, the exclusive participation program is for a select number of individuals, right? Why? Why do we have to limit the number? Well, because we can't have everybody taking the same trade. Eventually it shows up on the big bank's radar, right? And if it shows up on the big bank's radar, they'll trade against it. And we don't want that, obviously. So these spots are limited. Now the first 10 individuals to call in and sign up, we'll receive a personal one-on-one -on -one consultation with the Ian Cooper, right? And you don't have to do that right away, right? You can get into the service, work with it, start learning, and then as you build a list of questions, you know, do your one-on-one -on -one with Ian. And the bonus, right? Anyone who subscribes to Ian's service will receive access to his daily Skype group for trading collaboration and coaching, so he's in there trading during the day, right? It's normally a $2,400 a year value. He's going to give you that for free if you subscribe to his news trading service. So what you need to do right now is call in. Right, I'm going to put up the number here. Uh, the reason we need you to call, we need to speak with you because we need to make sure this is a good fit for you. This is not for everybody. Okay, so we need to make sure this is a good fit. So if you're in the U.S., you can use the 800-883-0524. 
Uh, outside the US, you can use the 832-404-2420, right? The email, you can email support at ffrtraining.com if you have any issues getting through or whatever, All right? So you've got a call, right? As soon as the webinar ends, give us a call. Let us just ask you a few questions, see if this is a good fit for you. And then let you lock in your 100% guarantee. Uh, we'll go over everything with you that you need to know and everything that we do will be in writing. All right, guys, do you have questions? If you have questions for me or for Ian, go ahead and post them. I right, wanna make sure that we get all your questions answered, right? That's why you're here. All right, so I'll put up the number, I'm sorry, the, uh, the phone numbers again. Uh, Marco, give us a call, Marco. We've got different packages, depending on what your needs are, uh, different time frames. you know, one or two year program. Just give us a call. Again, we, we need to make sure that it is uh, a good fit for you. So that's 800-883-0524 in the US and outside the US, you can use the 832-404-2420. All right, so this uh, session, yes, was recorded. Uh, we will send out the recording uh, after, obviously, the uh, the webinar. We'll get that out to everybody. But you need to call in now to lock in, make sure you get your 100% guarantee. And again, think about what these kind of numbers would do for your, your financial life. You know, think about your IRA, you know, your IRA may be middling around, you know, eight or 10% a year. And if you've got what most people in their fifties have for retirement, which is about $30,000 saved, you know, that's not gonna cut it. You need to do something different. I'll tell you a quick story <clears throat> about one of my clients, um, Captain Jay, started in uh, with me in October of 2020, just got laid off uh, due to COVID, didn't know what he was going to do for his retirement. Uh, he he uh, uh, got into one of the programs. He actually got into two two of our uh, programs. Uh, and in the one program, he started with about $137,000 back in uh, October of 2020. We just celebrated uh, this morning because last night his account just hit a half a million dollars. All right, Captain Jay is going to have a retirement because of these programs. And that's just one of his programs. He has another program uh, that also he did about 80% last year. Um, so if you want to change your financial life, this can do it. This can be the thing that changes your financial life, that gives you, you know, allows you to have a retirement. Or if you're in retirement, if you need income, right, we have strategies that we can help, you know, build you a monthly income. All right, guys. Again, in the U.S., just call the 800-883-0524, outside of the U.S., 832-404-2420. Right, I know this, if you don't take any action, nothing changes, right? Nothing in your financial world is going to change unless you take that step. All I'm asking is you give us a call, let us speak with you, see if this is a good fit for you, All right? If this program maybe is not a good fit, but maybe we have others that are a better fit, you won't know unless you call. All right, guys, uh, unless there's any other questions uh, for me or for Ian, I uh, wish you all a great uh, rest of your trading day. Uh, Fed news just came out uh, this afternoon, so uh, we'll see what that does uh, for the market here. Should be exciting, and I'm betting that Ian is probably licking his chops uh, to get back to the trading. So, guys, appreciate you being here. Take care, and we will see you soon.